Hi friends, it's Amy. Welcome to my channel. Today I just got this random package in the mail. I don't know what it is. I'm going to see what it is. It's a book. It ha it says book on it. It's not ticking. Um, so I thought it'd be a really good time um, to do my July book haul because I think that I'm done buying books for the month. So let's get to it. Oh, this is cool. Okay what it is. Uh, Crock-Pot Express Cook Crock Multi-Cooker Fast Cooked Slow Cooked Recipes. Um, so story time. Um, I have a Crock-Pot Express Crock Cooker and in April of last year they recalled the lids of the express cooker and so I just had to you know go online and tell them that it was broken and then they would send a replacement well I didn't get the replacement until May which they kept on, they and they kept on saying, you know, we're really sorry. We went, we know you haven't gotten it yet. Like I didn't even, I didn't have to like call them and say, hey, it's not here yet, or email them or whatever. They just like knew that it was taking a really long time. Um, so this says, we hope that you've received the replacement lid for the Crock-Pot Six Quart Express Cook Multi Cooker. I have. Okay. We recognize the replacement process has been longer than promised and want to offer you more than just an apology for the difficulties you have faced. As such, in close, please find a collection of our favorite crock pot recipes as a small token of our appreciation for your continued patience and understanding. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah, that's cool. Thank you. Christine Robbins, business CEO, business unit CBO of Crock-Pot. This is very cool and I do appreciate it. And I was annoyed but understanding <laughs> of the whole issue. Um, so I'm slowly starting to use my Express Crock again. And this is really going to be fun. Look at these pictures. <laughs> looks oh it's hard to see but oh I can't wait to go through this and yeah fun thank you all right <clears throat> anyway so uh in June I was like yep need to slow down the book buying because I had a very successful thrifting um couple thrifting sessions. I had a very successful library book sale. Um, so I told myself to slow down, which I did. Um, but I had a bunch of gift cards. So I have like my normal subscriptions. Um, I have a bunch of gifts because I use gift cards for them that I got from families. Um, of my students. Some are for me and some are not. And then I have a couple that I actually did purchase. So um, I'm going to start with the subscriptions. This I should have already put up the video um, of my unboxing for the Bookshelf Thomasville of Kiki Kaliri Breaks a Kingdom by Sangu Mandana. And Donna, she is able to fall into mystical worlds that she's drawn in her sketchbook. I mean, that's kind of cool. 
I wouldn't want to fall into any of the drawings I do because I'm not a very good drawer, but um, it does look very interesting. For book of the month, I chose We Are the Brennans. I heard um, good things. I love This Is Us. And one thing I heard is that this is like reading This Is Us. Um, so I decided to give it a try. And then I added on The Personal Librarian by Marie Benedict and Victoria Christopher Murray. And this is about the personal librarian of J.P. Morgan. Yeah, the remarkable story of J.P. Morgan's personal librarian, Belle de Costa Green. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Belle de Costa Green, the black American woman who was forced to hide her true identity and passes white to leave a lasting legacy that enriched our nation. 1905. This starts out. So that, so those are my subscription haul. Then I purchased Murder, She Knit, which is the Cozy Escape, um, Cozy Escape Book Club run by Cortagonist and her name is Lisa and I can't remember the name of her channel, but I'll link it down below. Um, and I'm not very far in it yet. Um, however, I am enjoying it so far. We have a, um, Pamela who hosts, who is part of a knitting club and they just get together once a week and they just sit and work on their projects and talk. And one of the new members, um, gets murdered with knitting needles and, that's all the farther I am right now, but it's Cozy Mystery. It looks adorable. Look at that cute cat. Its name is Katrina. <laughs> that just makes my heart happy. I am excited to dig more into this. Um, I wasn't going to um, buy it, but then I just saw it and I just, I just wanted it. So I did. Um, another book, I've talked about this one, I think think is One Cold Summer by Robert J. Cowles. Um, he is a Wisconsin author and um, he was doing a reading at a local bookstore and I read the synopsis and it sounded really good and I decided to pick it up. A nice inscription. So that was really cool. I am about 50% of the way on this. Um, I keep on having to set it down and read other books, but I am really enjoying what I'm reading so far. There's a lot of banter between the characters. Um, it's about two brothers who, um, one of them is, is like a do-gooder, like always doing what he's supposed to do. Um, and then the other is kind of the black sheep of the family, kind of always conning people and doing things he's not supposed to do. And um, the troublemaker returns back to Door County, Wisconsin, and things happen. So it's a good one so far. <laughs> You'll find out in my July wrap-up, I hope. All right, and then the rest of these, I used gift cards. Nope, just kidding. This, um, Finlay Donovan is Killing It by El Cosimano, is the book that I received from Krista at Books and Jams um, Christmas in July Exchange. I received this book from Debbie. And this is about a mystery novelist who is a divorcee. She's kind of struggling financially and she has two kids. And when she's pitching her novels to her aid, her agent, she is overheard and somebody wants to hire her to um, take care of her husband. <laughs> 
<laughs> I just think that sounds really fun. I can't wait to dig into it. I don't know when I will, but I really hope it's sooner rather than later. So that is Finlay Donovan is Killing It by L. Cosimano. I put this on my wish list because um, Collected Works Bookstore in Santa Fe um, recommended it to um, the podcast that I listen to at Currently Reading. So this is definitely one I want to get to soon. Then the rest of these are books that I purchased with a gift card. So this first one I have read, I read a long time ago. I still think about it all the time because it was creepy and atmospheric and I just loved it. And that is The Body of Christopher Creed by Carol Plume Uki. I'm sorry. Very sorry. Um, and it says Christopher Creed was a freak, a weirdo, the kind of kid who makes other people feel uncomfortable. But even more disconcerting was his disappearance. Was it murder, suicide, abduction, or did Chris Creed just run away? He's simply gone without a trace and nobody in a small hometown of Steepleton knows what to think. The only apparent clue, a cryptic email message written 24 hours before Chris turned up missing, draws 16-year-old Tori Adams into the mystery and sends him on a path filled with terror and pain. Soon, vicious accusations are flying around Steepleton, pitting friends against one another, and the truth just keeps getting more twisted. Will Tori ever find out what really happened to Chris Creed? This book, I just loved it. I want to reread it and, because I still think about it. Um, and my older students, I think, will really like this. It's YA, um, so it's definitely only for my eighth graders, maybe seventh graders, iffy, but um, I'm very excited to have this in my classroom, even though it might be behind my desk to recommend to certain few students. But The Body of Christopher Creed by Carol Plum Usi. I'm going to say it. I'm very sorry if it's wrong. Um, and then also for my classroom, um, I got the first five Keeper of the Lost Cities. Um, I found the first one at the library book sale and I have been buddy reading the first one with Krista at Books and Jams. We are having an absolute blast. It is so good and propulsive. And I've just really liked it. And we decided that we were going to continue reading through the series. And I was looking online. I was trying to think, should I buy it for my classroom? I kind of think it's going to propel some of my students to want to read it. Like, um. So I kind of do want the, the rest of the series. I looked it up online and um, I could get the first five, which I already have this one, but I could get the first five for $5 a book. And I had a gift card. So I did it. Um, <laughs> it was less expensive for me to get the first five than to get just these four that I needed. It was actually $10 cheaper to get all five of them. So that's what I did. I have the first five. I'll work on getting the rest of them. Um, I'm not going to um, push it too much, but yeah, I'm very excited now that I have this to put in my classroom and I'm excited to finish book one and get to book two. And finally, I picked one book for myself with my gift cards, and that is Sold on a Monday by Christina McMorris. This book has been on my, my wish list for a while, and it just sounds so delightfully heartbreaking, if that's a thing. Um, so it was inspired by a picture of four children for sale because during the Great Depression, families were forced 
to sell their children because they didn't have the means to support them. So as a last resort to get them um, the nutrition and what they needed, they would sell them, which also allowed their parents to live. Um, so this says, the sign is a last resort. It sits on a farmhouse porch in 1931, but could be found anywhere in an era of bread lines, bake, bank runs, and broken dreams. It could have been written by a mother facing impossible choices. For struggling reporter Ellis Reed, the gut-wrenching scene evokes memories of his, fa fa of, of his family's dark past. He snaps a photograph of the children not meant for publication. But when it leads to his big break, the consequences are more devastating than he could ever imagined. At the paper, Lillian Palmer is haunted by her role in all that happened. She is far too familiar with the heartbreak of children deemed unwanted. As the bonds of motherhood are tested, she and Alice must decide how much they are willing to risk to mend a fractured family. Inspired by an actual newspaper photograph that stunned the nation, sold on a Monday is a powerful novel of love, redemption, and the unexpected paths that bring us home. It just sounds beautiful. I saw her. Um, Christina McMorris on Friends in Fiction, and I just really, it's been on my wish list since then, and I had enough money left on my gift card, so it went in my cart. So, that's it. Those are the books that I got in the month of July. Not too bad, a lot of gift cards, so I didn't spend a lot of money. So I'm kind of proud of myself. Yeah. Have you read any of these books? Are you excited about any of these books? Um, I would love to hear, see, read your thoughts down in the comments. Um, and I would love to hear what you picked up for your own library in the month of July. Let me know down in the comments. I will see you again later. Happy reading. Bye.